When you think of entry-level GPUs, what comes to mind? Maybe the GT1030, the GT710, the RX7600, or even the Intel Arc A380. But what if you want a graphics card from none of those brands, and for a similar price as the GT710? Well, in that case, you buy this. So this is the Morethread MTT S30. It's a fully Chinese-made GPU that you can only buy in China. It costs just 399 RMB, which is about $55. If you don't know more threads from the previous video, you can watch that here by clicking the link in the top. But in summary, More Threads is a Chinese company making their own GPU chips, which was founded by a guy who used to work for Nvidia in China. And supposedly, they're already sanctioned by the US, mainly because of GPU's use in artificial intelligence. But does that mean the US is scared because More Threads is a threat because of their vast processing power? No. Well, not currently anyway, as you will see with the performance of this card. So let's get unboxing. So first we have the instruction booklet which shows how we install this card, and I think most of us already know this. It also shows this part about a resizable bar, which is very important because it has to be turned on to get the full performance out of this card. And then we have more stuff that I can definitely understand. And then we have the MTT S30 graphics card wrapped up neatly. Straight away you'll notice the 5cm tiny fan with the heatsink that covers the majority of the board, however it doesn't fully surround the graphics card. And did you notice something else? And I don't mean the VGA port, but we'll get onto that later. Have a look at the pins at the bottom of the card. You will notice that they only go halfway. And that's because this card is a PCIe X8 instead of an X16. I think it's weird how they made it the size of an X16 slot, but with just half the pins, since you can still plug an X8 into an X16 slot. I guess they wanted more stability with the clip on the end when plugging it in, or perhaps so they wouldn't think that people got the wrong card because it's too short and it wouldn't fit into their slot. I don't know, but it's still very interesting. Flipping the card over onto the rear, we have just a sticker and one of those annoying warranty steals which are super easy to remove without damages to the sticker anyway. This card features one HDMI 2.0 output capable of 4K at 60fps and one VGA port. If your graphics card still has VGA, then you should really get a new card. Okay, so that's all well and good, we've discussed that this card's pretty weird, but is it good at gaming? Let's first talk about the specs of this card so we can find out. The MTT S30 has 1024 cores with 4GB of GDDR6 memory. It has a 1.3GHz core clock speed, a 128-bit memory bus, a 40 watt total board power so no extra PCIe power connectors are required, and as we said before, one HDMI 2.0 and one VGA port. Okay, so let's plug this in and get some games running. Okay, so first let's turn on Resizable Bar and that's just a setting in your BIOS. And then installing the drivers took ages because the site wouldn't load properly. Okay, so now we've got everything installed, we can see on GPU-Z that it can't detect the graphics card. And we still have the PES utility like the MTT S70 and S80. So here we can see all the stats, the specs, and also the overlays. And it also has a launcher for all these games like QQ Games. And Steam. Here's my QQ email address if anyone wants to email me. Okay, first up, let's try GTA 5. I've got it on about normal, medium, very high for texture quality settings. This card does not have DirectX 12, so no DirectX 12 games are going to work. So in GTA 5, we got an average of 22.1 FPS with a 1% low of 6.3 and a 0.1% low of 4.7. This actually surprised me because the average FPS was actually quite playable and decent. It wasn't the best as shown by the stuttering in the 1% and 0.1% lows, but it was really decent for the cards at this price point. For comparison, the MTT S70 only got 30 FPS when I tested it at the same settings. So they must be improving the drivers as the MTT S30 card costs 6 times less than the MTT S70 at launch. But considering the Nvidia GT710 can get about 30 plus FPS on this game in the same settings, it doesn't seem so good anymore. I'm going to test some games listed here in the performance and game experience optimization list. So let's start with Metro 2033, which they say has an increased performance of 20%. So Metro 2033 tells us that GPU may not be supported, but despite this, the game still runs fine. At medium settings 1080p, it gave us an average of 16.6 FPS, with a 1% low of 9.8 and a 0.1% low of 9.5. So this wasn't very good and was pretty difficult to play. However, turning down the settings further could allow for some better FPS, although I really wouldn't consider this playable. If these scores are increased by 20%, then I really wouldn't want to see how the card performed before these driver updates. 
Next up we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider at the lowest settings 1080p. We got an average of 6.5 FPS with a 2.3 FPS 1% low and a 1.3 FPS 0.1% low. Yeah that's not great is it? And it performs worse than the GT710 in this game. Okay so let's try Genshin Impact which is a game that they have in those performance increase notes. Actually never mind because it just keeps giving us a black screen no matter what I do. But if the results are accurate, which they probably aren't, we got 30.1 FPS at low with a 1% low of 16.9 and a 0.1% low of 15.1. At medium we got around 22 FPS. So 3D Mark next, and we can't run Time Spy because that's DirectX 12, but we can run 3D Mark Fire Strike. So in Fire Strike we got a score of 1996 and a graphic score of 2072. The score is so good that we can't even see that the green bar has moved. So we found out that this graphics card is not that great for gaming, but that's okay. Why? Because this GPU was designed for office use mainly, and they have shown how much utilization of the CPU can be reduced and offloaded onto this graphics card. And I think that's where the strong points of this card are. It's capable of H.264, H.265 and AV1 video decoding in a small low-powered package. Thanks for watching.